Alright, this video I want to speak about how to manage your fear. This will be applying a lot of the teachings from Eastern philosophy, from Buddha, from the Tao. Uh, just a, a different perspective on life. Um, there can't be life, you know, without death. And it really is coming, this fear is really coming into terms with death and how to accept it and understand it and just get deeper into it so then you can kind of become like spiritually awakened and enlightened before that time comes and when you come to that enlightenment the way that you handle certain situations where where death might be a factor you handle it with a lot more ease and less stress so you know with with illness for example you know the smart thing to do is just learn to learn more about certain illnesses and to learn how to, to keep yourself healthy. You know, so, you know, if a certain illness is passed, you know, from one person to another um, because of lack of hygiene or cleanliness, then you want to make sure that you maintain your cleanliness. You know, making sure that you're washing your hands, you're taking your showers, brushing your teeth, um, washing your clothes. Um, that you're eating healthy, that you're eating food that's not contaminated, like like knowing, like knowledge is important, you know, to protect yourself. Knowing like how to cook chicken so you you don't get like salmonella poisoning, you know. Um, knowing that whatever meat products that you're eating, that you're cooking it the right way, and that you're eating it where. Um, where it's safe, you know, making sure that the food is safe to eat, making sure that the, the types of food that you're eating are clean and healthy. Um, basically not, not giving yourself food poisoning. So you have to have the knowledge on, in knowing how to do all that. And knowledge is important. You know, knowledge gives you power. You know, um, like knowing, for example, that you can't get certain diseases um, if you, um, you know, are intimate with somebody that you don't know and you don't know where they've been. Um, you have to be really knowledgeable that, hey, you know, I can't get certain diseases if I become intimate with this person. You know, I don't know their history. I don't know where they've been. Um, I don't know who they've been with. Uh, somebody is showing signs of sickness, you know, a runny nose, coughing, um, you know, and congestion in the chest, and, you know, they're, they're clearly sick, you know, then you want to stay, you know, away from the person, you know, and, you know, like, let that person heal before you make any contact with that person. You know, and even before, you know, when I established this school over 10 years ago, before any of this stuff was going on, um, I came up with a greeting, um, which is common in the East, not so common in the West. In the West, they're all about handshakes and hugs. But in the East, um, it wouldn't really be like that. So we would greet each other with a bow. So there's no contact. There's no, there's no, you know, we would simply just bow like this. We wouldn't shake hands, wouldn't bump fists, wouldn't bump elbows. It's just acknowledging somebody, saying hi, and, you know, limiting contact. You know, not just in, in reasons of protecting your health in case the person is sick, but also, also it could be signs of respect as far as, you know, not 
overcrossing certain boundaries. You know, certain certain hugs could be getting too close and causing certain emotions amongst certain people. Or um, there's different ways of hugging, and a lot of times um, you could hug a certain way where it's too much, or hug a certain way where it's not enough. Um, and it's just not everybody will feel comfortable with, with hugs. And another thing is when you shake somebody's hand, a lot of times people look at that as like a display of power. You know, a person has a stronger handshake, so that means he's more confident, more capable, more of a leader, things like that. And, you know, people that have weak handshakes, they're frowned upon. And it becomes more of a display of ego and power opposed to just just generosity or openness or just you know it's not so much ego based you know but then there are other things where where they'll they'll be like they'll turn it into ego oh this person needs to bow lower than me because they they are of a lower status so they need to bow down further i mean it's just the ego works in a lot of uh intricate ways and they, they find their way somehow into some everything in order to make it something about power or competition but there are benefits as you could see of greeting somebody with a bow opposed to having to touch the person and all these other things you know so so knowledge is, is extremely important in everything that you do you know so you live your life with certain things of you know certain precautions keeping yourself safe you know and what we expose ourselves to on the internet and media it influences our behavior so imagine if every single traffic death was reported at every single moment, every single state, every single every single country they reported every single traffic death. Um it could be very easy to be at that point um, completely afraid and in fear to drive or to even be near the road if they reported every single homicide that ever occurred at every single moment all over the world we would be constantly in fear of our lives so the media chooses what they want to report on and that can have an influence in how you feel about a certain thing but regardless of how people pass away regardless if it's from illness from homicide from gunshots from um, alcohol from traffic accidents from natural deaths from suicides from whatever um, circumstance it all boils down to this fear of death that we have to just look into and learn to understand that hey um, the fear in a way is, is designed to protect you but it should not be there to take away your joy in life and to appreciate life. Essentially, you can teach yourself to appreciate life more when you hear about or when you read about you know, deaths that are occurring around you it could teach you to appreciate life more opposed to being in fear of death and I think when these situations teach you to appreciate life more 
it further enhances your life in a positive way rather than allowing the fear of death to take away the joy that you find in life. So what's important is to be knowledgeable and to just be more aware of your surroundings more aware of the circumstances and just to be intelligent with how you live the decisions that you make you know knowing that there's a lot of traffic deaths like minute after minutes you know day after day doesn't mean that you should be afraid to drive it just means that when you drive you have to be very cautious and you have to be aware um, and with illness for example if more and more people are dying from illnesses then it just puts you in a situation where you have to take care of your health a lot more Exercise to, to build a strong immune system. Eat very nutritious and very healthy. Sleep well. And be very aware of who you surround yourself with. You know, um, your home and keeping things sanitized and clean. And, and just also knowing who is in your home. Who do you allow into your home? And when you go to work, you know, just be aware of your surroundings everywhere you go. You go on the train, you go on the bus, you go in the car, you go to your office. Be aware of everybody around you. You know, and if a lot of people are getting sick um, all over the world, then you it, it it will be smart to limit you know certain events that you might attend that might have mass gatherings because you you want to protect yourself from this illness so you know with for example when there's a mad cow disease and there's something wrong with the meat then at that time when there's something wrong with the meat uh, you want to limit your consumption of meat if you know if not completely eliminate the consumption of the meat until the thing is resolved um, that would be just the, the smart thing to do and it's not out of fear but it's out of that decision to protect yourself and for me Living a private life is how was what I'm used to. It's nothing new to me. It's actually joyful for me. So my life doesn't change much. But for others, where they, 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 they love to be around large crowds at all times because that is where they find joy. That is what gives them energy. That's what makes them happy. It's going to be a lot more difficult transition for them and this is teaching them to to understand the positives of the opposite life the private life and for people that are in great fear of death these certain situations you know it's going to challenge their their spirituality and their spiritual growth is going to force them to think about the potential of death and and um, how they might not be here you know even tomorrow or a month from now or a year from now and that 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 thought just grips them um, and bothers them but this forces them to look at it, to analyze it, to understand it, and to try to grow from it, mature from it. 
you know, and we don't know what's going to happen, like, in the future. You know, you don't know when your time will come. You will never truly know. You know, there's a lot of weapons out there, a lot of guns out there, and a lot of people dying from gun, from um, getting shot. You know, there's a lot of traffic accidents out there. A lot of just accidents in general. You know, and and there's a lot of STDs out there, and, and just a lot of different ways to fall Ill, into illness that can be life-threatening. And that's just what life is. You know, um, there is death. You know, there, there can't not be life without death. So, you just have to understand that you need to appreciate every moment that you're living because you don't know when death is going to come. Tupac, it came at the age of 25. I think Aaliyah, it came at 21. Bruce Lee came at 32. You know, and... You know, not everybody gets the chance to live a long, healthy life until they're 100 years old. There's a lot of people that die much earlier than that from just various diff different things that happen. Some people just get cancer out of nowhere and they pass away. Um, sometimes there's just a tragic accidents. You know, and sometimes people fall, you know, fall ill. You know, and the key thing is just is, is to become knowledgeable. And then once you have that knowledge, there should be less fear. And just, just more, more so preparation, readiness. Just like when you're training in combat, there's no fear because you know that you can defend yourself if something happened. But the training involved, training your body, training your mind, training your spirit, you know, it helps you to be prepared so then you don't have the fear that most people have. And that just comes through constant training. So, when you become enlightened, when you study Eastern philosophy very deeply and you really understand these teachings, you have less and less fear because you've looked at this for so long. You looked at this question, this, this, this idea or, or this fact of death. You look at it deeply. And you understand it. You know, you're, you're, you're ready for it. But it doesn't mean that you want, you want it now. But you're just ready. You know, just like a martial artist. He's ready. He's prepared for combat. It doesn't mean he wants to fight. But he's ready. So, when you get to a high level understanding of of Eastern philosophy, you understand that death is inevit inevitable, you know, and it's gonna come, you know, but what makes the difference is how, how you respond to that in your life. How do you live your life before that time comes? You know, and are you living in fear before it comes or are you living in joy and just appreciation of life before that time comes? And that is sets the difference between somebody who's spiritually developed, between somebody who's not. Is it the person who's spiritually advanced? He truly enjoys life, he truly appreciates and loves life, and he just celebrates life before that time comes.
with knowledge, with understanding, with being prepared. So during times like this, especially if you're going to stay inside more, spend more time alone, this is a very good time to do a lot of reading on the teachings of Eastern philosophy, a lot of time in practicing and learning more about meditation. Um, these are the types of time, this is the, the time to to really advance yourself on the, on the spiritual level um, in order to truly further your your development and your your spiritual growth this is the time for us to grow spiritually so just want to thank everybody out there for all your support hope hopefully this video can help some people take care